Ce qui se passe dans les bois est un véritable podcast sur la criminalité. Nous discutons d'événements qui sont souvent de nature violente. La discrétion de l'auditeur est conseillée. What Happens in the Woods is a true crime podcast. We discuss events that are often violent in nature. Listener's discretion is advised. Over the past few years, the rise in fascination with true crime podcasts and docuseries, with all of the sort of details they can offer, has been on the rise. The world seems to crave a horror story that has its origin in the perfect American neighborhood. But is there a point where it becomes intrusive into the surviving family's grief? Loved ones are lost every day. It's the circle of life and an eventuality we all know will come. When someone is lost suddenly and tragically, the grief hits a little different. When that story is shared by strangers in the form of entertainment, the grief is on display, whether intentionally or not. Our case this episode is a very recent story that made national headlines. But while the story is spreading, It's important to remember that there are real people who are suffering the loss of a beloved daughter and sister. It's unfortunate that the family of the victim will not get the answers they deserve, and the victim will not get justice. We wish them strength during this time, and we wish them well. This is True Crime Podcast, What Happens in the Woods, with your host, Jess and Bryce. Let's get started. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome. We are back with another episode this week, and we are one week away from, I don't, I, I just don't even know what to say. Am I excited? Am I nervous? What am I, Bryce? You're excited. Am I? You are. Am I? Yes. Yeah. We're one week away, guys, from the Pacific Northwest True Crime Fest. Yay. We are madly prepping and planning and oh all the things all the things all the emotions it's going to be the time of our lives so yeah we hope that everybody comes out we really are looking forward to meeting people and we've uh we found out where our booth is going to be and uh we we're, we're in the party corner we're going to get into some trouble I have a feeling. Are we? I think so. I don't think the weekend will be complete unless security has to come over and tell us to tone it down at least one time. They ain't going to tell us shit. No? No. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, so we found out that our booth is right next to uh, Elise, the true crime cat lawyer. Mm -hmm. And then the um, ladies from Pacific Northwest Haunts and Homicides. Yes. Yes. So you're going to find us in good company. Yes. And we're going to be having a lot of fun. The party corner. The party corner. <laughs> party corner. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's going to be shenanigans central. And I don't know. We may be getting into a lot of trouble. I don't know. I'm hoping for anything. Maybe some shots. Is there alcohol a lot at this event? Okay, Have they no. said anything about alcohol? No, just a pre-game on Friday night. Right, that's not really a pre-game. It's pre-game. No, no. Pre-game. I don't know. We'll see where the we'll see where our our little devious minds can take us. Yes. Yeah. So there's still tickets available. You can buy a two day pass for eighty nine, or you can buy the one day pass for fifty nine. And just to remind everybody, we're going to be presenting on Saturday. And if you need some discounts, we've got your hookup. We've got some discounts. We've got a discount, let's say that, for uh, it'll get you 10% off your tickets if you use our code, which is WHITW10. And that'll get you 10% off your tickets. Either one, it doesn't matter which one you buy. So save yourself some money. Takes care of the tax. You can use that money for other things. There's supposed to be other booths with, you know, 
there's going to be things to purchase, things to look at. So come prepared for fun. We're, we're excited to see everybody. I'm not excited for presenting, but I'm excited to be there. Let's put it that way. Okay. Okay. Put it that way. I may, maybe I'll just freeze and you'll have to present. What will you do then? Uh, will you save the day? Thanks everybody for coming. See you later. <laughs> have a good night. You won't be the, the man who comes in and saves the day. I did. I just ruins said, me everybody. from disaster. I'm, I'm going to freeze and you'll be like, okay, that was a wrap. That was yeah. awesome. Thanks, Jess. Thanks, honey. Yeah. And then we're, you, what are you going to do? Carry me off stage? Maybe we'll do it next year if we're invited back. <laughs> I, yeah. If, if we fuck this up, we're not invited yeah. back. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sure that's probably what I would expect at least. I mean, I'll, I'd love to do it again. I just, it's hard when you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I just think everyone's anxious because it is the first one and we don't right. know what's going to happen. Maybe next year when we get all, all of us get experience under our belts, we can be like, oh yeah, we'll do this again. Right. I, I, I just think there's a lot of bugs to be worked out. And yeah. Yeah. If well, we get invited you know, back. First, first event. Yeah. So that's to be expected. You also found out that there's some kind of a 5K? Yeah. So there's like a Pacific Northwest True Crime 5K evidently they're going on at the same time. But is it, I'm just confused. Is it related? I have no idea. That's interesting. That's just, just random. If it's, if it's not related. I and just it's typed the same in weekend. Pacific Northwest true crime and the 5k came up. Which, Weird. And, and at Auburn at the college. So it's probably related. I, it wouldn't, I don't know. Maybe it just has the same name. I don't know. Why would they do a 5k? What's the 5k? What, what I don't, I don't know. So you can run away from sure from your attacker? Sure. That's your training? Yeah. It's just a weird... I think it's like a separate thing. I don't think they're like... like yeah. You don't, don't think know. they're related? No. I mean, we didn't know anything about it, hadn't heard anything about it. I so I, maybe they're not related. It's just odd that it would be at the same place on the same weekend the same and name. have the same name just with the fest dropped. Yeah. Well, I mean, if anybody's a runner, there's a 5K. Yeah. Yeah. I. That's not us. We are not your people. We're not runners. I, I don't think I, you know, at some point I thought in my life that maybe I might be a runner. And I think now it's, I'm old and it's just not going to happen. Okay. Right? I sure. mean, I'm too old to start that shit. That can't be good. Oh, I've seen ladies in their 90s do it. So what's your excuse? I'm sure they didn't just start running, though. No, they did. No, they didn't. What 90-year-old women do you know that are doing that? What 90-year-old women do you know, period? I don't know. There was a bunch of stories on YouTube that the, the 90-year-old mm. women were doing sprints. Mm -hmm. I mean, they weren't breaking world records, but, I mean, they were doing it. They started. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's started a... when? In their 90s? Yeah. Mm. I have to bring this up on YouTube. What doctor signed off on that? I don't think a doctor has to sign off on it. I would think that somebody should sign off on a 90-year-old becoming a sprinter. You can't just not be active your whole life and then at the end of your life decide you're going to become a runner. I don't know. Heart attacks happen. The same, like, Shin splints. starts at jujitsu at, at 60. Okay, that's, sure, at 60. I just can't imagine a 90-year-old woman starting running. And and yes, I am not 90, but I still feel like I'm too old to start something like that. Okay. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's just in my head. Yes. Well, you know, some days I feel a lot older. Okay. Speaking of which, it's almost my birth month. Do you like that segue? Don't ignore me. What? Don't ignore me. I wasn't ignoring you. Yes, you were. I wasn't. It's almost my birth month. Almost. Almost. Well, when this drops, it'll only be one day away. <laughs> one. No. Yes. It'll be 27 days. No, from my birth month. From your birthday. Yeah, well, 
We're not talking about birthday. We're talking about birth month. Birthday. October. October. And who else's birthday is the same as mine? Beth? Yeah. My friend Beth from Crimson Closets. I was just listening to their episode and they were talking about it. She was talking about her birth month too. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's different in the Midwest. <laughs> she's not in the Midwest. Oh, she's in Carolina. Yeah. Sorry. She's on the East Coast. Sorry. It's, it's not different. It's not different. It, it's different. East Coast rules. Beth chime in. <laughs> I, I, I'm i pretty sure Beth is going to allow uh, me to have uh, my birth month. Uh, yeah. So don't expect, don't expect her to overrule this. Uh, She's going to side with me on this. Okay. Scorpios. Come on. We're twins, basically. <laughs> we're separated at birth. Whatever. Right. You're not part of the killer bees. I don't have to be. <laughs> I have I have my own uh, stinger. The killer bees, Beth and Bryce. Yes. <laughs> You'll be back together soon enough. Reunited. <laughs> That's fine. I'm happy to be partnered with Christy. Okay. I love you, Beth. Uh, we're we're always gonna have that birthday. I don't know. Maybe birthday we'll switch love. it up. I don't know. No, I think we're sticking to the same people. We're just Okay. Yeah. We're we are switching up something, but not that. You will get to be the killer bees will reunite. <laughs> Yes. Yes. So don't 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 get worried. There will be two episodes for people to listen to. Halloween specials. The killer bees will be on one. That's right. And then Christy and I will be on another. Yeah. It's gonna be a good time. Good times. We have uh we have a topic. Uh oh. That we're yeah, so we have we have a theme, I guess you could say, that we're gonna we're going to go off of, so. So what's new with you? No, no updates. Uh, I finished Paper Girls. Paper Girls. What's that? It's a show on Amazon Prime. When were you watching that? Oh, yeah, it's, no, maybe I don't know. Never mind. What? I thought I knew because some, something's being canceled. Is it being canceled? I don't know. Is it? I don't know. I I read something. I know. I think it's girls who code or something like that. Oh yeah. That's... Yeah. Never mind. Paper girls. I don't know what that is. It's about uh, paper girls. Instead of paper boys. Yeah, paper girls. They do a route, then they get sucked into this time travel. It's weird. Time travel. Yeah. The fuck. Yeah. Why time is travel. that a running thing lately? I don't know. Maybe we're close to it. I hope not. No? No, I could see that fucking up shit a lot. Uh, well. I don't I don't want my life messed with in any way. It was okay. I'm not uh, maybe it just wasn't my cup of tea. Oh, okay. When were you even watching that? After I go to bed? <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Cuz Bryce doesn't sleep. For those who don't know, <laughs> I go to bed at like nine o'clock, I start getting tired. I dot. am an old lady. Yeah. And it's been like that since I can remember. Yeah. I mean, always. Um, I need a regular bedtime and I need my sleep. And that's just the way that goes. Bryce, on the other hand, <laughs> is, he never sleeps. I do. Mm -hmm. He'll come to bed at like three o'clock in the morning. Sometimes. Yeah. Not all the time. Not all the time. If he doesn't come at three, he's in at four. <laughs> Don't act like you come in earlier. I come in earlier. The fuck do you... No, that's a lie. Last night was one. Was it? Yeah. Mm. I don't know. See, that's the thing is I'm I'm asleep. <laughs> so unless he, he bothers me and wakes me up, I I don't always know. But I try not to. I, that's not true. You come in and, and try to give me a kiss and it freaks me out because I think somebody is trying to attack me. <laughs> startles me every time just your husband just yeah i don't know that i'm asleep mm -hmm. why wouldn't you just let me sleep because then you'd, you'd complain that i didn't give you a kiss last night how, how would i know i'm asleep <laughs> how would i know you're like you didn't kiss me last night. who's gonna know i wouldn't know okay i would have no idea but yeah so bryce will stay up and do whatever he does <laughs> For five, six hours after I go to bed. A lot of it's game time. 
Mm-hmm. Some of it's TV. Some mm-hmm. of it's research. Obviously, you're watching whole series without me. It's not like I watch it all in one. Mm-hmm. I left it alone for like three weeks. I had to power through it, like the last two episodes. There's only eight episodes. I mm-hmm. It was all right. So you just really didn't? There's just one season? Yeah, so far. Oh, okay. And yeah, they're and, girls? They're yeah. like young girls? They are. How do they get into it? How, how, how would they time travel? How would they even know what it is? How young are they? Like 13. Oh, okay. That's an okay. Like if you okay. had nothing to do on a flight, I would say watch Paper Girls. <laughs> okay. But it just, it wasn't my cup of tea. I, I don't, I don't, yeah. Yeah. It's no Stranger Things, but. I mean, what, what even holds a candle to that? I don't know. I haven't watched the Rings of Power yet. I don't know. You're going to laugh. I only liked those movies when I was pregnant for some reason. But I've not ever wanted to go back and watch them all. Your sister, however, is, I mean, (laughs) don't don't get a little little bit bit. talking on it. I know she's probably like, what the fuck, Jessica? Yeah. I, I can't. You know what it is? Mom used to make me watch. The cartoon, The Hobbit. Mm-hmm. I know we've talked about this before. Yeah. I, I can't. I can't stand it. It was freaky. It freaked me out. Yeah. I hated it. And as good as the movies are, that's still my reference point. Like, that's my childhood trauma. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, that cartoon was horrible. Love you, mom. But that was not, I should not have been watching that. No. And no. Mm. Mm-mm. It's like the the Dark Crystal. Should not have been watching that. That is not a child's movie. That's Jim Hansen awesome fucked me up. That was an awesome movie. No, it wasn't. It was creepy. It was creepy as fuck. And it was even creepier because it was Muppets. It was awesome. No. Mm-mm. Okay. Well, are you uh, ready for a case? I am. Okay. Well, let's get into it. Uh, There is a trigger warning for this episode, so there is a a very brief mention of suicide in the episode, but please, you know, if anybody, um, if that upsets anybody, please just listen responsibly. So our case this week is actually really recent. I've never done anything this recent. It actually was just last month. Oh, wow. Right. It is also in the same area as the murder we discussed in our last episode. So while I was actually researching the murder of Anna Repkina for the last episode, I came across this article that mentioned this case that I'm about to bring to you. So uh, it was, I think it's just a really unfortunate reminder of, you know, it seems that podcasts will go back a ways. I am drawn to older crime stories yes, because as I've mentioned quite a few times, but it, it just always blows me away how we idealize the morals and values of older generations mm-hmm. and how they're represented to us. And these people got away with some fucking shit yeah. and we're doing some really, I mean, some of it is just it it sounds like something that you would read about that you would not think would happen after hearing about how you know strictly they stuck to a moral code in you know like the turn of the 1900s yeah. and to hear about some of the crime that happens it always amazes me it's the psychology of it yeah. right this i think was just a reminder that these are people's lives and and thinking about how recent this was and while there's not a whole lot of information on it yet it just really hit me this is somebody's unfortunate life that is just now spread across the news yeah and my telling of this is not to help further that in any way but to show that there's a side of crime that, I mean, kind of a spoiler, it doesn't give the family closure. And while this is fresh and new and it's this, you know, today's story in a month or two months, people are going to forget that this happened, but this family is still going to be suffering. Oh yeah. And that's, that's what I think gets lost in translation sometimes. So 
Today, I will be discussing the murder of a young woman from Corvallis, Oregon. Her name is Kaylee Birdsell. And unfortunately, like I said, I don't know much. There's not much that's been put out as far as news reports, really, of her background to her life and interviews with her family. They're not giving too many details, which obviously we want to respect their privacy and and let them grieve. This is very fresh. Yeah. What I can say is that Kaylee was a beautiful young woman. She was full of life. Her social media accounts are still active, and she really just showed somebody who, and of course, you know, social media can portray different things. We post what we want people to see, but I hope that as beautiful as as all of her pictures looked, I hope that her life was at least half as beautiful as that. She was said to be kind, and she really showed up for people when they needed her. And she had the love and support of her mom, Lori, and her sister, Ashley, and was in contact with them daily. She was just doing the best that she could. She was 27 years old at the time of her murder. So when a few days went by without any word from Kaylee, both her mom and her sister knew that something just wasn't right. And their suspicions were confirmed when they tried to call Kaylee. And instead of hearing her voice on the line, when the call was answered, the cell phone was answered by a man who she had been in a relationship with by the name of Fabian Hernandez. And there are some questions as to whether the two of them were still in an an active relationship and together. It's said that in some cases he was ex-boyfriend. It's said that, you know, they had previous relationship history It's not known how recent that was. Kaylee's family had commented that she had been trying to get away from him. So Hernandez answers the call and Kaylee's mom and sister asked where she was. And to that, Fabian replied, quote, oh, I haven't seen her around town. I'm not sure. If you're going to make up a lie and you've got her cell phone, that's the stupidest fucking thing to say. I'm so sorry. You, You are not smart. On Friday, August 5th, Ashley, her sister, filed a missing persons report for Kaylee. And she was concerned at that time. She, in an interview, she said, I just, I felt like it was already too late. But I did, she obviously didn't know what else to do and was trying to figure out what was going on. On Sunday, an anonymous tip came into the Washington County Sheriff's Office from a female caller stating that, quote, Kaylee had been killed by Hernandez and another woman in the back of a vehicle, and her body was placed in an apartment complex dumpster in Aloha, Oregon. This tipster also pointed the sheriffs in the direction of where Kaylee's Dodge van that she had been living out of could be found. Investigators quickly set out the search, you know, for the van. It was parked in Tigard. And the apartment complex that the caller named was in Aloha. So there's Aloha, sorry. (laughs) I, I read it and I want to say Aloha. Yeah. Aloha. There's like 20 minutes difference, I believe, from where her van was parked to where this apartment complex was. And this is all kind of a outside of Portland, like very outside yeah. of Portland. But Beaverton, Aloha, and Tigard, they're all kind of like west and south. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They also went on the lookout for the woman who was supposedly with Hernandez when Kaylee had been murdered. And as luck would have it, the woman would be pulled over just days later in her Jeep Liberty by a Washington County deputy for unrelated events. And who should be in the passenger seat of her Jeep but Fabian Hernandez? Is that the same lady that called or that that caller? It's not known. It says anonymous. And actually, the woman who drives the Jeep is not named. I did find her name in a post on like a a post that somebody had put on an article, I believe, asking why she hadn't been arrested and did name her. However, none of the reports from the news and nothing that I could see in the police in in an official capacity named this woman. They also did not name the person that called anonymously. Okay. So I didn't want to name her when it wasn't out there. No, I got it. They also find some very shady shit in that Jeep. For one, there's a bullet hole in the back seat. For another... I bought it that way. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> for another, there's what looks to be blood splattered in the rear of the car It as was well. there when I bought it. 
It, sure. It was. It was. And the woman's not cooperative, the driver. She's not cooperative. She claims that she doesn't know anything about Kaylee. And of course, she didn't do anything. It's never me. Yeah. No, I didn't do it. Don't know anything. Didn't see anything. Couldn't tell you. But then when they're, you know, investigating a little further and they see the bullet hole in the blood, she changes her tune. And she starts saying, you know, I, I can give you information. Basically, she says <laughs> she needs to get away from this dude because she has information, but she's not going to release it in front of him. Yeah. So I'll, I'll talk, but you, you got you to gotta help me out. Yeah. You do something for me, I'll do something for you. And the sheriff that, you know, pulled her over later recounted that she said, quote, especially named Fabian said to get her away from from Fabian. So, quote, get her away from Fabian and to a police station as soon as possible. And that she would tell them everything that she knew. Mm -hmm. I'm sure at that point she knew she was either, you know, you're it doesn't look good. No, you're either going to go down. Yeah. Or, you know, he was going to go down or you both were going to go down for right. a crime. You, of course, want to get your side of the story out there first. Mm -hmm. And you want to be helpful so that it looks good for you. Yeah. The thing is, at this time, they were not associated to the missing persons report. Neither one of them? No. Oh, they wow. were pulled over on unrelated things. <laughs> so, just fucking... so she just starts singing. She, uh, they see blood and she's like, oh, yeah. I, I I will tell you everything. Just get me the fuck away from him. So both she and Hernandez are taken into custody. The woman apparently to give a statement of what she knew. And Hernandez was held for unrelated crimes on identity theft. I was going to say, he and, probably has fucking warrants. Yeah. So <laughs> identity theft and fraud, fraudulent use of a, a credit card. It wasn't her credit card. Was it, it was not. Oh, okay. No, it was completely unrelated. Was yeah. Shitty. I mean, he has her cell phone. It would be the next logical, you know, yeah. he's obviously not opposed to taking things. They hold him for, you know, the charges of, of the identity theft. And at the sheriff's office, the woman states that she feared for her life if she didn't do as she was told. The question is, what exactly was it she was told to do? Yeah. Well, you have to wait until this break for the details. Oh, just days after Kaylee Birdzell's sister reported her missing, two people are in custody at the Washington County Sheriff's Office in relation to a tip received on what happened to Kaylee, one of whom is Fabian Hernandez, who had previously been in a relationship with Kaylee. Fabian is a repeat offender, as you might have guessed, and just last December, so December 2021, um, he had been arrested for burglary, theft, criminal mischief, being a felon in possession of a restricted weapon, and carrying a concealed weapon. He was caught in a Motel 6 in Beaverton, Oregon, by an officer and his canine sidekick after a call came in that there was a break-in at a business called Black Hole Body Piercing and Tattoo. So Officer Dan Colson and his the partner. Hell would you break into that store for? <laughs> yeah, I fucking. You, you I, can't get piercings after hours, sir. <laughs> What's funny is, like in his mugshot, there's I see no tattoos or piercings, mm. but that doesn't mean he doesn't have any. I I'm not saying that, but what are you going to get there? That's what I don't know. I mean needles, but needles for tattoo tattoo guns. Yeah. So what are you going to do with those needles? Um, maybe he was just carrying piercing jewelry. Maybe there was money there. I don't know. Maybe he was just curious. Well, I, whatever he is, or maybe I don't know, but he, he's just not the smartest guy. So it had been snowing. It's December. Yeah. And, uh, when the canine officer and, uh, officer, Colson. So the canine is named Atlas. Hello, Atlas. Just, just so everybody knows. They responded to the call. They take a look at the business. They notice that the back door's open and it's been forced. And there's footprints in the snow leading away a couple blocks down to the Motel 6. Okay. Right up to the door they go. Oh, wow. Yeah. He so, didn't even double back, sir. No, he, he did not. And he didn't try to... I, no attempt made to cover these tracks. 
So they uh, find him in the room with a bag that had obvious items taken from the tattoo parlor and also confirmed the shoes in his possession matched the tracks in the snow. Uh, again, I, I, I understand that not everybody is a genius. I am not a genius, but mm-hmm. I would cover my tracks, I yeah. would hope. But it's unfortunate for him, but it's fortunate for, you know, the officer who was investigating this. There's obviously other history of offenses as he was charged as being a felon in the possession of a woman, uh, a weapon. So a woman, a woman, yeah. um, you know, to some people, their weapon is their woman. Yeah. I don't know. Me and my girlfriend. Right. Uh, that, you know, just is an obvious thing to one thing leads to another. But, you know, generally... If you are uh, in possession of something that you shouldn't have, that means that you've been in trouble previously. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to fast forward to August of this year uh, when Hernandez and the unnamed woman were driving the Jeep and they were detained. So he's arrested at that time for identity theft and fraudulent use of a credit card, as I had stated. And these were not related to Kaylee's disappearance, but the unnamed woman wanted to talk, obviously. Mm Mm-hmm. She was taken to the Washington County Sheriff's Office, as she had asked, in order to give a statement about what she knew, her involvement, and Hernandez's involvement. In her statement, she says that somewhere between the night of July uh, 31st and the morning of August 1st, she, Kaylee, and Hernandez were driving on some back roads between Sherwood and Aloha in the woman's Jeep. Kaylee was asleep in the back seat, and... Hernandez pulls this gun out of nowhere. He's in the passenger seat and turns around and shoots Kaylee several times, resulting in her death. She describes the gun as, quote, a dirty, hairy gun, a large gun, and the type of caliber it is. She doesn't know why he does it. There's no apparent motive to him doing this. It's just random and all of a sudden. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's her her story. That's her story. Okay. Right. Hernandez did start living in Kaylee's van that was found and searched in Tigard. So he he took that over. He took her cell phone. Who knows what else he did with any of her possessions. And the woman reiterated that she was scared for her life and she felt threatened by Hernandez. She went on to tell officers that the two of them drove to Goose Apartment Complex in Aloha and placed Kaylee's body in a steamer trunk and then into the trash compactor behind the apartments. Steamer trunk? Yeah, I don't know where the steamer trunk came from, if they found it someplace or if they had it. Just happened to have one. Or if it was maybe dumped at the apartment building. Yeah. Not sure. It was mentioned in a couple of articles that officers interviewed Hernandez as well as talking to this woman on the same day. But it is not clear if he declined to talk or if he was cooperative in any way. So investigators with that information quickly set out to the apartment complex to search for anything that may be there to confirm the statement. Unfortunately, it was too late. So the trash compactor had been picked up. Yeah. It was taken to the local landfill just outside of Corvallis in Benton County. And on August 9th, a team of people went to the landfill and searched for Kaylee's remains, which is a huge undertaking. Oh, That's yeah. not a, a, just a few people getting together and, you know, let's go it's take an a, hour and, and try to figure this out. That's a huge undertaking. It's not a small place. Either. No. They were successful, sadly, or, or not, depending upon how you want to look at it, that her, ma- her remains were found so it's good. It, it is good because at least, you know, not only is that the family is is able to properly, you know, grieve and just dis- and um, have her remains taken care of how they see fit. But also that is something that they can link back to their suspect yeah. and, you know, solidifies charges to hold somebody accountable. It was confirmed a day later by, you know, the coroner's report that her death was ruled as a homicide. So multiple shot wounds. 
Charges of second-degree murder and abuse of a corpse were added to the identity theft and fraud charges that Hernandez was being held on, and his arraignment was scheduled for just a few days later on August 18th. Abuse of a corpse? Was that just because they dumped it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sadly, Fabian Hernandez would not make it to that court appearance. So on August 17th, he was found in his jail cell unresponsive due to self-inflicted injuries. Life-saving efforts by medical staff at the jail, fire rescue, and EMTs were done. And they were able to get Hernandez uh, stable into a local hospital for further treatment. He unfortunately died just days later in the hospital, knowing how he didn't ever recover from his injuries that he inflicted upon himself. Was he by himself in the cell? So it does sound like he was by himself and that as a guard was doing rounds, they came upon him unresponsive. Okay. And I don't, what, I don't know if they, they don't do know that, by like, what means. Like put him on suicide watch or anything like that. They just let him in a cell. I mean, they may not have put him on suicide watch. I, I think it's a safe bet that he was maybe detoxing. So I think that they might have had a special... You know, he might have been in a, a more visible place, but I, I can't confirm that either. Okay. So he died six days after he was ar- arrested and charged. He was waiting for his arraignment. Yeah. With his actions, you know, Kaylee's family has been robbed of answers. Yeah. And justice. They, I, I don't know how I, that would make me feel. So I can't presume to speak for them. And, and I have read a couple of news articles that said that they were very upset, of course. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I can't begin to imagine. Oh, neither can I. What, what that would do. Because not only, I mean, this all takes place within two weeks, a two-week period, basically. She was reported missing on the 5th. And by, you know... The tw- what the twenty third? Yeah, they they don't have her. They don't have any answers, and now they can't hold anybody accountable. And it's it's a lot to process in that short amount of time. Too. Yeah, you know that sucks. Yeah, there was a small memorial set up at the apartment complex where her body had been left. Even though it's not, I there's no known association with this apartment complex. She didn't live there. It wasn't mentioned that he or the unnamed woman lived there. I don't know why they went there. I don't know why that's what they chose to do. But obviously the police were there and there was a presence and the people that live in that complex are aware of why the police were there. And it left a mark. Yeah. So they've set up a just a small little memorial out along like a, a path And they wanted the family to know in one of the articles that I read that while they didn't know her and they had no connection to her, they definitely are thinking of the family and and thinking of her and and how just horrific everything was. And I think, I don't know, that just kind of touched me, I guess. You know, these people don't know her. They don't know anything about her. Yeah. But... You know, this hor- horrific thing has caused them to want to let their family, her family, know that people are thinking of her yeah. and that it, you know, they're no, very they're grieving with her, with them, you know, regarding her. There was also a GoFundMe started by a family friend to help cover her funeral expenses. Mm-hmm. And it did get met in full. So well, I was good. happy to see that they did get a little bit over what they had been initially asking for, for help, mm-hmm. which... I've heard that GoFundMe's don't aren't really helpful sometimes because there's like fees that are taken out. Oh yeah. So I I don't know. I I've only heard stories that like somebody might get thirteen thousand dollars and they'll get like half of that after fees are taken. Yeah, I don't know. It has everything to do with like a holding company because they're they're just a middleman. Right. For GoFundMe. So I I was happy to see that it was met, but. And I don't believe they're still accepting any. I think it's closed. Mm-hmm. I didn't see any way to to donate still, but it's it's unfortunate because she was young, number one. So I'm, you know, it's not like she had a retirement plan or something, you yeah. know, life insurance policy to fall back on. 
And this is unexpected. So we all know funerals are not cheap. It's no. yeah. So I was I was happy to see that because, you know, that's something to help the family at least alleviate one worry. You know, enough to be able to handle that. Yeah. So. And like I stated, while this case has made national news, it's still, there's very little details. I could not get a copy of the probable cause report nor the coroner's report. Yeah. I did request them both, but I also didn't really pursue very hard yeah, um, to get it. Up. Because there's some, well, I, I, there's, in the end, does it, do I really need it? No. Yeah. Not so much. It, it was it was interesting to look at a case so recent, like I said, and and some of these things are hard to find because not everything is going to be released, um, especially in this case because he truly is still just a suspect. He is not he was not convicted. Yeah, he wasn't. The he, trial didn't go through. But. Right. It, I think uh, you know adding that that he committed suicide while in custody. There's probably going to be a lot of investigation into that, and so they're really not going to release too many details more details than what they've already released yeah. because they're probably doing like an internal review on how did he do what he did. Yeah. It's also probably because, you know, she's the only one that saw it and it was, it's her word. Right. Know. The, the unnamed woman. Yeah. yeah. And she was not charged. Him, that helped him dump the body. She has not been charged to this point. And I, I don't know if that may change in the future as well. And maybe that's why they're not releasing some details. I don't know how it would change. He's the only other person that was there. Well, right. But I mean, technically she was an accessory. Whether she she was an accessory after the fact. But I don't think you can testify against yourself. And like, they don't have any witnesses. No, that's true. I don't know that that doesn't mean that they can't charge her. And then what? How are you going to prosecute her? Uh, I, we're going to call someone I, to the stand. Who saw it? That's just it. Well, you have her confession, but. Right. That's the thing. She's already confessed. She confessed to helping. I'm sure the lawyer can get that thrown out. Maybe. You can't. Yeah. I mean, that's just one of the things. You can't. You don't have to testify. And, and I don't know that she necessarily needs to be prosecuted in any way. I, I mean, she did assist. But yeah. as she states, it was under threat. You know, she she felt threatened. Obviously, if he's going to turn around and shoot somebody who's asleep for no damn reason yeah. in a moving car, I'm, I'm sure she was like, well, at any minute, it could be me if I don't help. Yeah, I that I get. I 100 percent get. So I don't I don't know that she needs to be charged, but maybe they're still going to pursue that. I don't know. There's a lot of things that could still unfold with this because it is so new. I mean, it's barely a month old. Yeah. But it was, it was an interesting, uh, I guess, uh, point in perspective to think about. Of you know, families go through this. It it it's there's news reports all over the place in local you know Washington and Oregon papers. I found an article in the Sacramento Bee. I found multiple articles in other places. Something like this is going to fade away very quickly. It's it's getting news right now, I think, because, and that's unfortunate, but I think it's because he harmed himself and then died. Yeah. And I think that's what's getting more attention, not necessarily just Kaylee's part of that story, but in conjunction with what he then turned around and did. Yeah. And I think that's why it's getting so much recognition now. I think in a couple of months, like I said, this is going to get forgotten. There are going to be more crimes. There's going to be more things that happen. And this family is still going to be left with no answers and grieving. And, you know, the world will have moved on. Just a reminder that, you know, these are, these are people. These are people who are dealing with this every day. And they, you know, have to continue after something horrific has happened to their loved ones. And it's, it's not all fun and games. Very serious thoughts that went through my head while I was researching this one and just looking at all these news articles. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it sucks because it's almost like the, you know, the one, the DNA one where they found her killer 16 years later or. Which one? I mean, we've covered a few that had DNA. Just the most recent one. Karma never forgets. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's no closure. It sucks. Yeah. But we definitely wish the family well. And, and hopefully, you know, I maybe they just want this to all blow over. And, and if that's the case, then I, I hope that happens. I hope that that they get to grieve in, in peace and, yeah. you know. I mean, can, it's no consolation, but at least they found her. Yes. I I think that, that they, they have, do have the answers of uh, what yeah. happened to her. They have and, closure in and one s- part. Right. And it's not, they're not going to continue to look for a missing person no. and not have that answer. Yeah. 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 That's, there's that, I guess. Hopefully they they will be able to move on and yeah, we wish them well. So that'll do it. We, we've got one week until we are at the Pacific Northwest True Crime Fest. So we thank everybody and we look forward to seeing you next week at the True Crime Fest. Come and find us. Say hello. Let us know your favorite episode. And, uh, yeah, come and hang out by the campfire with us in the party corner. Party corner. Yay. (laughs) All right, everybody. Thank you, as always, for listening. Please let us know your thoughts on this episode. And, uh, as always, be kind to one another. And uh, stay safe. Can't forget that. But most important... Stay out of the damn woods. Stay out of the woods. Bye, guys. Bye. What Happens in the Woods is an independent podcast and is managed and produced by Gospel for the Rebels, LLC. Research and content are presented by host Jessica, with all editing and producing done by your favorite resident techie, Bryce. We believe in transparency and will always list our sources and information in our episode notes. We are always looking for new cases and stories to tell. We welcome your interaction with us on Facebook and Instagram at WHIT Podcast and at Twitter, What Happens in the Woods, I-N-T-2. Or if you prefer, our website is whathappensinthewoods.com. The campfire is open to all. Thank you for your continued support of our podcast. If you love us and want to continue to hear us bring you episodes, please share and like us wherever you can. But the best way to help us grow is to hit all five stars and review us on whatever platform you get your podcast fix. Until we meet again, campers, stay safe and stay out of the damn woods.